a lot of times when we're you know on the stage with libertarian candidates we're agreeing with you guys with libertarians more than we agree with democrats Hi, I'm Nick Gillespie with Reason TV, and today we're talking with Kirsten Kukowski. She's the press secretary for the Republican National Committee. Kirsten, thanks for talking to us. Thank you for having me. Why should a libertarian, a small L libertarian who believes in free market, small government, lifestyle toleration, gun rights, why should they vote for the GOP? Well, I think you just ticked off a lot of things that are in our platform, a lot of, a lot of issues from just smaller government um, and obviously freedom, liberty, all of these things that we talk about here at the RNC all the time. And we have a lot of candidates, a lot of great candidates from Joni Ernst in Iowa uh, to you know, Cory Gardner in Colorado who are out there talking about these things every single day. But you also have on the opposing side, you have a Democrat party that they have spent the last six years mm -hmm. under, under Obama pushing policies that are more intrusive into our daily such lives, as. such as Obamacare. Uh, okay. that, that is a, probably a, the singular biggest issue yeah. in terms of the, of the Democrats growing the size of government that we've been v very much yeah. against for a very long time. But uh, let, I mean, just to, to push back a little bit though, under Bush, when the Republicans held the White House, the Senate, and uh, the House of Representatives, federal spending went up about 50% over the course of his two terms. He busted out the Patriot Act, No Child Left Behind, the Department of Homeland Security, stuck us in two wars that we didn't pay for and we didn't win. Uh, then there was TARP at the end. Why should libertarians think that the Republicans have learned a lesson? Yeah, so, I think on a lot of those yeah. things we have learned a learned lesson, but also I would say to your, to your listeners and viewers that Times change, uh, things change, environments change. I think that 9-11 uh, was a very pivotal point for this mm -hmm. country and for a president. And I think that um, we, we now in 2014 look at, you know, look at the world as it was in 2001, mm -hmm. 2002, 2003 in a very different light. And so I would just ask for people to remind, you know, remind themselves. Um, but I think what you've seen now is you've seen people, leaders on the Hill, um, whether it be um, you know, Rand Paul, Ted Cruz, mm -hmm. um, you, you know, uh, people who are out there every single day keeping their, the foot to the, to the fire on, mm -hmm. on these Democrats and you know, even on people in our own party right. reminding everybody, hey, we need to be, we, you know, we really need to be for smaller government and these choices right. um, really weren't what we needed as a country. And I also think that Seeing the Democrats overstep time and time and time again since since President Obama was elected, I think has has really reminded us as a party just how bad this get this can get and how we need to do. Now it's our role to bring it back. Yeah. I, I think you can make a strong case that libertarians shouldn't vote for Democrats, but then why shouldn't they vote for the Libertarian Party or you know why should you know the Republican Party? on social issues, particularly things like gay marriage and drug legalization, immigration, uh, abortion. Uh, you know, they tend to be opposite kind of a broader, and I realize we can debate the definitions, but of mm -hmm. freedom, you know, most libertarians believe that the drug war should end. Most libertarians are in favor of abortion, of, of it being legal, even if they don't avail themselves of it. Is there a sense that the Republican Party is gonna become more open to gay marriage, to drug legalization, to issues like that? Uh, you know, our party, uh, there are some things we're, we're probably not going to agree on, the Libertarian mm -hmm. Party yeah. and, and, and the Republican Party. I do think that the world is very different than it was in the, in the beginning of the 2000s. I think that our Growth and Opportunity Project report that came out in the beginning of last year um, was very, I think, pivotal in talking about how we can have be a big tent party, how mm -hmm. we can have have libertarians sitting in the same, you know, under the same umbrella, the same tent as Republicans, and all uh, get along and push forward policies um, that can make our country better. We have we have the beliefs that we have we have we are a um, you know we believe that marriage is between a man and a woman we believe we are a pro life party, um, but we need to do a better job of talking about the reasons that we are those things we believe in those things, but also of accepting others for what you know for their beliefs mm -hmm. and how we talk and you know, communicate with individuals and Americans so that we are not being judgmental um, and and having a conversation that's off putting to uh, to Americans out there. Do you think beyond, I mean, and that, that would be a welcome shift in tone from a lot of Republican rhetoric, but is there a, a place, uh, we interviewed Rand Paul over the summer and he talked about how for the Republicans to win consistently at the national level, they really need to become more of a live and let live party. 
Is there a sense that the national party will say, okay, you know what, let's, let's devolve a lot of these decisions, whether it's about the definition of marriage or the legality of pot or other drugs to the state level? Or will the Republican Party always be socially conservative in a way that will, you know, will in the end, whether or not, you know, we can talk, I mean, that's going to that's gonna be a real stumbling block between a libertarian and conservative. You know, I think that that is... I think we're, this is going to be an interesting conversation mm -hmm. as we head into a presidential year. I think you're going to have a lot of people. Um, you just mentioned Rand Paul. Mm -hmm. You know who is go we are, they're going to start a conversation in our party that's going to be very interesting mm -hmm. to be a part of and to watch. I can't tell you that um, you know that we are going to change our platform. Our yeah. platform is our platform, and I can tell you from being a part of that process last time and seeing mm -hmm. the debates. There are a lot of people in this country that believe in what our platform stands mm -hmm. for. Um, but we do need to understand that there are other perspectives out there. And we need to have that conversation, which I think this party is, is willing to have that dialogue. Um, and I think 2016 is going to be a very you know, important year. Talk um, a little bit about uh, the Libertarian Party. And the reason is not affiliated with it, but the Libertarian Party among conservatives and Republicans often is, is cast in the terrible role of being a spoiler. And so say something like the North Carolina Senate race, but Sean Ha, the Libertarian Party candidate, is more than covering the spread. Um, are, do Libertarian Party candidates spoil elections for Republicans? I think that, that it, the wrong way I think, think they I think it's the wrong way to look at it. I think mm -hmm. that it provides a very good conversation, a very good contrast between mm -hmm. all of our ideas. Um, a lot of times when we're, you know, on the stage with libertarian candidates, we're agreeing with you guys mm -hmm. with libertarians more than we agree with Democrats on a lot of things. And I think that that is uh, a very good conversation to have with voters and I think voters appreciate that. They don't mm -hmm. want to look at this in terms of, you know, white and black. Yeah. Um, and I think that it's a very good thing. Um, to have that conversation. I think a lot of people sometimes, you know, I think this has happened in, in both the Democrat Party and the Republican Party, where we believe that a conversation is threatening. I think conversation is very good in these contexts. Well, we will uh, leave it there. Thank you very much. Uh, Kristen Kukowski, the Press Secretary of the Republican National Committee. Thanks so much for talking to Reason TV. Thank you.